Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick comparison between the Sony A7R Mark II on the left and its predecessor, the A7R, on the right. Now, the A7R launched last year and was a digital imaging feat. The first full-frame mirrorless interchangeable lens camera with a 36 megapixel sensor, uh, incredible overall resolution, really unmatched, and it did, of course, have some issues or I would say general areas of compromise that basically every camera suffers from because after all no camera is perfect but the overall design form factor build quality really all exceptional uh, however sony did learn from some of the growing pains mistakes whatever you want to chalk them up to uh, whether it was the fact that they didn't give this camera an electronic uh, shutter that was silent which we now have in the newer a7r mark ii also, the lack of internal 4K video capture, something that they couldn't even address in the A7S, which was their low-light beast that could capture 4K video, but only in an external fashion, which of course bumped an already expensive camera up into an entirely different range. Great OLED viewfinder, multi-interface hot shoe, articulating display. I mean, this camera really had all the bells and whistles to make it a great flagship DI uh, offering and it was exactly that in fact I'm still in love with the overall finish feel uh, but Sony reacted to user feedback and really tried to take it to a whole nother level and they did exactly that and that's why we went from a body that uh, was a little over two thousand uh, dollars to a successor that now is priced at thirty two hundred dollars of course we did move up from that 37 megapixel sensor to a 42 uh, megapixel backlit sensor something that has never been done before but we also got the benefit of 4k video s log uh, another great feature built into here for uh, professional uh, grading essentially or capability i should say uh, in addition, we got a much bigger, bulkier body, more grip to work with because part of the growing pains of understanding the full frame world was that this grip simply wasn't enough and Sony also kind of felt that the entire body wasn't necessarily enough to manage the larger, heavier, bulkier uh, lenses that they were going to have to roll out in their roadmap in order to accommodate what users were looking for, which was brighter glass in a full frame mirrorless world. Uh, and that is basically a necessary evil when it comes to making glass faster. Here we have the Zeiss FE 24-70, a lens that I personally love shooting with. And whether it's on this camera or the A7R, uh, it really does fit it quite well. But when you move to larger lenses, like let's say um, the 70 to 200 uh, G f4 that I have right here, there's no question that this is going to feel a lot more comfortable to shoot with on the more substantial, larger gripped A7R Mark II than it is on the original A7R. Uh, also, of course, I mentioned the uh, benefit of now having a completely silent shutter, something that I wish the A7R originally had. That was a big gripe amongst consumers. That was completely abandoned in favor of a completely silent uh, electronic shutter. And here, of course, that is a setting you have to change. But even the actual shutter itself is much quieter, uh, the electronic shutter, than what we had here, uh, which many people mocked. Uh, and I understand why it was loud. Personally, not an issue for me. But so, again, on paper, 42 megapixels, 36 megapixels, uh, but now backlit, better low-light performance. In fact, it does take on the A7S, believe it or not. That's how much technology uh, has improved. And you are paying for it at $3,200, but also design cues. Let me flip this around so you get a better look at the actual bodies, uh, the change in layout. Uh, buttons, the actual shutter button being relocated. These are things I covered in my preview of these cameras, but I wanted to reiterate it today because I know a lot of people are wondering whether or not the A7R Mark II is worth the money or would they be better uh, suited spending the money they would shell out on this new body on just getting better glass for their original A7R or A7 II or even their original A7 or A7S. And my answer to that question is really simple. What are you trying to shoot? That's what should determine uh, the answer to that question. If you require 4K video, internal video capture, the best of both worlds, and really what right now is being touted as the best mirrorless full-frame camera ever made, arguably maybe the best uh, interchangeable lens camera ever made, digital that is, 
then you are kind of looking at it right now in the A7R Mark II, or at least that's what it's being touted as, and that's why it's got a one to two month back order. Uh, the A7R, on the other hand, at its launch, an amazing marvel in uh, you know mirrorless full frame DI, but not without its quirks. Now you can purchase a camera like this at a substantial savings, especially today with its age, uh, and of course now a successor on the market, even though I do feel like they're so far apart in price that it really should have, the Mark II probably should have garnered a different name altogether. But that aside, uh, if you don't find yourself needing the 4K video, needing uh, the extra grip, because I know I was always happy with this grip, do I think more could have been added? Sure, but I like the fact that Sony kept the body style small. That is a very big benefit uh, of uh, the mirrorless form factor, always has been, but since Sony has been shifting the focus to E-mount over A, clearly they knew size was going to have to increase in order to accommodate larger, faster glass. And if you take a look at the Zeiss 35 f1.4, you instantly see exactly what I mean. Uh, even looking at a lens like this, it is substantially larger. Throw on something like the 70-200, to 200, which I can't even get in frame, and you quickly understand why more grip, uh, more heft, more... Uh, physical beef was necessary in order to attract more professional uh, shooters beyond just traditional hobbyists. Uh, but all of that aside, I can tell you that there is no question the A7R Mark II outperforms the original A7R in every way. But again, whether or not you're better suited to spend the extra, extra uh, couple of thousand is going to come down to, do you care about the 4K video? Uh, do you care about uh, having far superior low light performance, that electronic shutter. Uh, in terms of the 4K video, 100 megabits per second, uh, and that's captured in XAVCS. Uh, the A7R simply cannot do that. Ten you're going to be living in a 1080p world. So if you don't mind 1080p video, the A7R is still a great option, still produces amazing stills, amazing resolution. Uh, but there's no question that the R Mark II is in another league, and its price reflects it. Uh, also, the uh, OLED viewfinder here now is Zeiss branded. It wasn't here. It also has a greater uh, range coverage. Also, autofocus has improved tremendously. 399 phase uh, detection points on the new Mark II, something you won't get here. So even though they both do five uh, frames continuous shooting, uh, I expect the accuracy and overall speed uh, of the autofocus, not I expect, I know from use already from a few days, to be far superior here with the Mark II. Another thing you're paying for, and also you've got the eye focus detection, which is critical, and five axis stabilization, something I've left out remarkably through the course of this video that just doesn't exist here. So we've got in-body stabilization, five axis a compensation with native lenses, three axis with non-native lenses, really allowing the A7R Mark II to be that camera that could work with any glass, which Sony always hoped E-mount cameras could be, always sold them as being, but of course uh, the A7R didn't have that in-body stabilization, so it did not have that benefit. So it's really a matter of how much native glass you're looking to work with, whether you care about 4K video, S-Log, I mean, all of these things are relevant. The wider range that the uh, EVF covers because they did improve that. I mean, Sony really looked to improve every element of the A7R. Just quickly looking at the back of the cameras, things pretty much stayed the same. Not a huge departure here. All the buttons pretty much in the same location. It's really about what they did at the top of the camera, uh, moving the actual shutter button to the grip, uh, front grip, those are the elements that are really different, making it a little thicker, a little heavier, but then building in all of that functionality that I think many of us wished had been in that previous generation, and now we have it. So even though the A7S was a gem, the A7R Mark II accomplishes everything that was missing in Sony's full-frame mirrorless lineup and does it in style. So personally, this is my favorite. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.